before I even thank you for being here, I will be taking all of these home for dinner tonight. Please do. No, That's I what shall. Here for. So, you guys, look at this book. Is this not the sexiest spice book you have? I mean, <laughs> I mean, seriously, sexy and spices don't really go together in a sentence, generally speaking. However, depends how you use them, I guess. I guess. But in terms of cooking. This book is amazing, and especially for someone like me who is very familiar with sea salt and not much else. <laughs> so talk to me about how, how this came together for you. I always wanted to have a book like this. I have been passionate about spices since I was a tiny little kid. I used to help my grandmother, you know, pound the spices in a mortar and pestle. It's, Did you really? Well, it's a good activity for a kid. Just get tell them to be careful about their fingers, but that kids like to bang on stuff, and I certainly do that with my daughter, Krisha, now. And anyway, so as I started traveling more and, you know, went to all these different faraway lands, I would come back with all these seeds and twigs in my suitcase. And, you know, of course, I would ask the shopkeeper, how do you use it, what is it, you know, and then I would come home and forget everything. And, you know, I, if I was in India, I would always ask, you know, my aunts and my grandmother and my mom in, in here. But when I moved to New York, I used to go to the store. I mean, I went to the store as a child when I grew up in New York with my mom. And then again, after college, when I got my first apartment here. And it's a beautiful spice store on Lexington and 28th Street called Calustian's. And if you love anything about food or you don't know anything about spices and you want to learn... Give yourself two hours because you will want all that time to browse and go check out Calustian's. It's a wonderful store. And if you don't live in New York, they do have a good online mail order business. So I would always ask them. I would say, you know, what is this? Or if there was an ingredient that I didn't know about in a recipe, I would ask them if they had it. And so really they have been a part of my cooking life for most of my life. And so they, you know, they're credited on the cover too because they provided all of the spices in the photographs that you see. And I'm really proud of the photography because it's hard to shoot spices. It's a lot of like, piles of brown powder often. But um, I think Evan Sung, who's a photographer, did a really beautiful job. We shot all of these pictures in my dining room. And oh, wait, really? Really, we just like change the tablecloth, change the dishes. Yeah, we are, I am like a little factory by myself. So, you know, like. That's like DIY at a new level. Here. My whole life is DIY. <laughs> DIY, you know, it is. I mean, that's, you know, I don't, my mother is a retired nurse and, and my stepfather is a, is a plumber. And, you know, I didn't really have any business training, certainly didn't go to Wharton. I was a theater student. And so, you know, I had to really learn on the job and I'm still learning how to run my business every single day and I mean the, the guiding principle of all of my decisions is my personal instinct because that's all I have and I am my best customer you know I'm um, I'm you know I'm a single mom I want to cook I want to have beautiful meals. I want to give my kid healthy food. I don't have four hours every night to spend in the kitchen. Usually it's like 30 minutes if I'm lucky. And so when I create things, I'm thinking about my counterpart in Chicago or Des Moines or, you know, whatever. And, and you know, not everybody has money to, you know, go to these wonderful places and get all these things or, you know, not everyone can afford to have like, you know, these delivery services that bring you these beautiful high-end boxes of food that, you know, okay, are great, but it's like, it's like $35 a head. I might as well go out to dinner for that. You and know? by the way, they don't take 20 minutes. Just yeah. FYI. I don't know. I've never used them. I but have, and okay. they don't. take significantly. I mean, just, no, seriously, I'm not singling any of them out, but just the chopping alone yes. will set you back an hour. Well, most of cooking is chopping. And so, you know, I never fault anyone for buying, like, ready-cut vegetables or frozen vegetables because that's life, you know. And so the Spice Book was just, I think... In all of my um, recipes, there are a lot of international spices, and I think they intimidate people, and I think most people don't even use the spices that are in their spice rack. And so I wanted to demystify spices, because spices are, for the most part, really not that expensive. Um, they are also not fattening, you know? They, and they're a way to give a lot of flavor 
to um, your everyday food anyway. Like, so if you, let's say you have a basic uh, ingredient list of chicken, onions, peppers, garlic, ginger, tomatoes, right? Something we all can get at the grocery store and probably use like four out of seven days a week. If you change the spices that you use with that dish, you can do fajitas, right? You can do chicken cacciatore. You can do chicken stir fry. And just changing up the handful of spices you use will get you that. And so if you have a user guide, you know, if you have something that tells you sumac is a wild berry that grows in the parts of the Middle East, you know, Native Americans used to use it to make cough syrup, the Romans used, to, used it as a souring agent before they discovered citrus fruit, it's prevalent in these cultures, this is what it tastes like, this is how you should use it, this is how you should store it, um, and that's what this book is. You know, it is literally an A to Z guide so that if you do love food and you are curious about eating new things or you love cookbooks but you don't know what the hell za'atar is, this book will tell you. What are the five spices that everyone should have in their spice rack based on your experience? That's hard. But I'll tell you, I think either herbs of Provence or fine herb. Um, Herbs of Provence is uh, something that comes from the south of France, from Provence. And if you just buy one spice to cook all of your Mediterranean dishes, I would recommend this. It's like oregano supercharged. It's, it's actually oregano, thyme, marjoram, and sage. It can have other things, including lavender, which is very traditional because that is also what grows in that part of France. But you can use it in your spaghetti sauces. You can use it in your grilled meats or fish. You can use it to, you know, in your stews to do sauteed vegetables and potatoes. It's really nice. It's not spicy. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't like spicy food. But most of spices, other than chilies or black peppercorn, are not spicy. You know, like even, even Indian curry powder, which is another one of those five ingredients that I would have. I always say choose a mild curry powder so that everyone in the family, including the children, can eat them. And then just add, you know, chili flakes or black pepper to make it spicier. Um, you know, curry powder is great because if you don't know anything about, you know, South Asian food or Middle Eastern food, you know, the Middle Eastern version of curry powder is ras al hanout. It comes from Morocco. It literally means like top of the line or king of spices. And it's a blend of many things, including nutmeg and cinnamon and coriander seed and cumin seed. And it's all pre-mixed for you. And just a little pinch goes a long way. And I always say start small. You know, um, just saute some potatoes and, and try a pinch with nothing but that and salt. So you can taste the nuances of that spice and experiment in a lo-fi way how that works. And then from there, you're like, okay, I get this. Maybe I'll add some shallots or maybe I'll add some tomatoes. And then maybe I'll swap those potatoes out for some chicken or some shrimp. And you just build and build. And then it becomes fun. Like to me, a box of spices is as integral to a good cook as a painter's palette is to an artist. It just gives you more to play with. And it revolutionizes your food um, without a lot of effort, really. And I follow you on Instagram, and I am so impressed with how accepting your daughter is, how embracing she is of, like, these really cool foods that you feed her. I mean, actually, I bow down to how, like, she eats really interesting, inventive, diverse, colorful meals. I mean, compared to most kids, that's really true. Um, it's all relative, because I still struggle, you know, with some things, like... You know, she, now she's like, yes, she loves bell peppers and carrots and cucumbers, but now she's in this thing where she, mommy, I don't like cooked bell pepper. I only like raw bell pepper. And I'm like, get over it. You know? <laughs> and I actually had to tell her, we were having, you know, noodles with, with stir fried noodles the other day with, with fried tofu and vegetables. And I said to her, I said, you know what? I said, you see these bell peppers? You know why they're chopped so small? So that you will eat them. And I said, if you don't, you know, if, if you don't eat them cooked, you're not going to get them raw. And, you know, and she kind of looked at me like, well, I'm supposed to eat my vegetables. I said, yeah, you are, so eat them. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm glad to the outer, you know, yes, I'm very lucky. She's a good eater. I think it's because she's um, grown up on Top Chef. 
and she's been in the control room, and she hears Gail and, and I and Tom and whoever's in that fourth chair, you know, wax poetic about all these strange foods. So to her, liking a lot of strange foods is very sophisticated, you know, makes her feel... The lady of the world. Right, it makes her feel very grown up. Like, in, in little ways, like, you know, yesterday somebody said something about Spain, you know, my hair, just sort of do my hair, and he said, oh, you know, in Spain, and, and uh, he said, Krishna, do you know where Spain is? And she said, yes, I've been there. <laughs> and, and it's true, she has, she's been there, but she was too young to remember that she had been there. She knows she's been there because she has pictures, you know, and she, she's there. But I liked the way she said it. I like that she gives importance to being international, to going and visiting other cultures and other places, because to me, that is the best gift you can give yourself or a young person, because I wouldn't be able to have written this book if I hadn't had the opportunity to travel as a model, and you know, just being from two cultures along the way, I was lucky enough to stop between um, shuttling, you know, from India to America and back. So I think that, you know, my profession and everything I do is directly informed by my wanderlust, by my lifelong gypsyhood. And I'm really thankful for it. And, you know, if any, I always tell young people, if you have a little bit of money, you know, don't, don't buy a high ticket item unless it's a camera, you know, but like go, go and travel, buy yourself a plane ticket. It doesn't matter if it's as far as Brooklyn or Belgium or Brazil, wherever you can go, go, because you don't know what adventure you'll have. You don't know the things you'll taste, hear, smell, touch and see. You don't know how that's going to affect even the way you dress to the way you think, to what you read. And I think it's very, very important for everyone to do. And before we talk about these rices that I shall be taking home, <laughs> we want to play a video for you. Okay. Time can get the best of me, but I won't give up my passion for creating fresh and healthy meals for my family. Padma's Easy Exotic Organic Rices and Lentils are natural, delicious, and ready in minutes. They're an essential part of mealtime in my own kitchen. From our family to yours. Padma's Easy Exotic. You're like a one-woman culinary empire between Top Chef, your cookbooks, this, and of course your, your best-selling memoir, which yes. isn't technically culinary, but... Well, it does it's involve food. food. Memoir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the tabletop. I, you know, like any good immigrant, I, like any good immigrant, I have 17 jobs. Um, I'm very proud of that commercial because we just debuted it last week, and literally, um, it was Krishna and I, and you know, um, an assistant who works with me, and this young filmmaker named Poppy, who's really talented, and. Um, she did it like beautifully and she's young and you know she's a great filmmaker and I wanted to do something that was you know authentic to my life because these rices really were born out of my kitchen like Krishna and I would you know make food or have a dinner party and we'd have all this leftover rice and I didn't want to waste it and so I would freeze it in little containers and then we would eat it because the natural medium of cooking rice is steam so it reheats beautifully and it really was helpful. Like, you know, we would come home late at night or we went to Paris for a week um, in, you know, in April and we ate at Arpege, we ate at Le Grand before. We came home, the only thing we wanted to do was have a bowl of rice. Oh my God, can I please go to, I'll, I'll be your free babysitter the next okay. time you go. <laughs> I didn't, actually, I didn't have a babysitter. I just w w did everything, but there was like a mommy and daughter trip. But what is, what is dinner like at your house when it's you and your daughter? Um, we cook one fresh meal a day, um, and then I usually eat that meal leftover for lunch the next day. It's always one protein, one starch, and at least one cooked vegetable, but also usually one raw vegetable. See above, she's into raw now. We're mostly plant-based. I mean, we don't eat a lot of red meat. We, we do eat bacon once in a while, but, you know, it's usually like potatoes, rice, noodles, or pasta, and then it's you know, tofu, black beans, 
lots of lentils. In fact, there's frozen lentils as well. There's curried lentils. Um, there's all kinds of like chicken and fish and seafood. And you know, when it gets really cold, like you know, one day I'll make you know a pork shoulder or something. We'll eat off of it for five days. But and then it's always one cooked sautéed vegetable and then some raw veggies that are put on the plate first to keep her busy while you know we're finishing I'm finishing up the cooking or you know if I'm working late my my nanny who who also lives with us um, you know she does the cooking but she you know she grew up in South India she's actually Tibetan but she was in the Indian army for 5 years so she can handle Krishna beautifully so <laughs> So she's, you know, she's... Only you would have a nanny that was in the army. That's amazing. She's, she was a paratrooper. Not that many female paratroopers. But, um, you know, she... It's so funny because, like, she she knows South Indian cooking, even though she's Tibetan. And But she wanted to know how to cook certain dishes. So I would send her these long-ass texts of how to cook, you know. And then I finally said, I said, you know, I've written two cookbooks. And we have a, our dining room is basically a cookbook library. We have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cookbooks. And obviously I get a lot of cookbooks from, from young writers who, who, who send them to me for quotes and stuff. And so, and she would never, she would felt intimidated to pick up one of those cookbooks, even mine. And so finally I said, just picture the text printed on a page and then bound because <laughs> I said it's t it's like getting a text from me but you know people have these blocks and I think they just you know whether it's spices or whatever they just need someone to hold their hand and say let me show you and that's really the the essential part of what I do for a job my job is to show you how to cook um, for your family through my writing or... You mystify something. Right, or through this rice, you know, when I'm not standing in the room with you. Um, and I think that's why I'm good at my job, you know, on Top Chef, is because unlike any other competition show, you know, on The Voice, you can hear how they sing and decide for yourself. And same with Project Runway, you can see the dress. And, and on our show, you can't really taste the food, you can see it, but you're really relying on our experience and us describing that experience. And so... You know, I certainly am not a, a restaurateur or chef, you know, in the way that Tom Colicchio is, but I've been eating all my life, and, 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 you know, that's what I do. I'm a food writer, and so my point of view comes from, you know, is the every man or every woman going to like this? Um, and it's the same way with the rices. You know, I wanted somebody to have an easy time. It's hard to feed your family, nutritious food that doesn't taste like cardboard and doesn't cost a bomb. And also, by the way, just as someone who, my son loves rice, so I've always, I'm always trying mm -hmm. to find like a cool different rice dish. None of this stuff exists in the marketplace. So no. you really tapped into something that, mm -hmm. I mean, you can get kind of like Asian rice bowls that are not yeah. very organic or well-made, mm -hmm. but you can't get anything like this. Yeah, this is totally organic, totally vegetarian. It's, it's gluten-free. It's vegan, actually. I mean, I'm not vegan or vegetarian, but I know that a lot of people are. And, um, you know, they're just meant to be easy. So, and also the black beans and rice... They're not up here, but there's a sixth one that's a black bean and rice. That's really spicy. Like we say spicy black beans and rice, we mean spicy for brown people. Not like, not like you know. Like, like meaning my face would blow up and turn red. If no, I it wouldn't. I mean, it, not if you liked spicy food, but you know, buyer be warned, you know. <laughs> like there are five other <laughs> boxes. Um, and if you have time to make your own, you know, stew or whatever, and you just don't, um, want to like spend the extra 20 minutes to think ahead or 30 minutes to make rice. We also have the plain jasmine, Thai jasmine rice. And when you when you warm it up, I you know I really encourage you guys to try it because when you warm it up, it smells like beautiful fragrant jasmine rice, and it's all whole. They're not like little broken grains because yeah. I'm really persnickety about my rice. <laughs> you know, I'm from India, so like I. I nail people you don't on Top Chef around. about it, rice all the time, so there's no way I can like put out a line of rices that isn't on point. So I'm very proud. And we also have brown rice and stuff. All right, you guys. Hit us with some questions. How's it going? Good. What's your favorite, uh, what's your guilty pleasure when it comes to food? I never feel guilty about taking pleasure. Oh, girl. <laughs> And 
And that is the best answer of the day. Next question. <laughs> I wanted to know, are there any spices that you actually would not use because you don't like them? Not that I've tried. Not that I've tried. I, you know, I, I am a super taster, which means I'm very sensitive to um, bitter. And I have taste buds that other people normally don't have. And it's like a dog that can hear whistles that humans can't. <laughs> but, but so I, I don't like things that are too bitter. You know, like, like I love black mustard seeds, but if you use them too much and you, and you cook them too much or you don't cook them enough, then they can actually have a bitter aftertaste. And I personally am very sensitive to that. The last question, please. Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, I was wondering, do you have any family traditional dishes that you guys have passed down through generation that you took your own spin on of? Yes, I totally do. In fact, the lemon rice, the Madras lemon rice is my grandmother's recipe. And, you know, if you don't want to buy the frozen rice but you want to make it, it's in my first cookbook, Easy Exotic. Um, for this one, we didn't put um, some of the lentils or cashews in it because some people are allergic to nuts. So we left that out, and the, and the lentils that we have in my grandmother's recipe, we didn't, we put one of them in, we didn't put the second one in because of the way that our turbines are. You know, when I had to get a whole education on, I know how to make food for six people or 60. I do not know how to make 60 tons of rice. <laughs> so, so I had to adapt, you know, some of the, and that was a real education, by the way. It was very interesting. Uh, go to the factory, wear hairnet and everything. It's very glamorous. Did all that? That's amazing. Yeah, of I mean, course. I yeah, I mean, no, so that, you know. I know you, you're a professional. Yeah, I'm pretty OCD about that stuff. Yeah, this isn't someone who's going to be caught, you know, with. I'm sure I'll be caught with something scandal. at some point. You know, my turn will come to mess up, but. No, I meant you know. a fac factory scandal. Well, I mean, I hope not, but, you know, but no, I mean, it was important to me. Like I said, like, you know, I, I just didn't want to put something out. I've had a lot of people come up to me to do restaurants or other projects that I've always said no to. And it's because, like, I don't want to put something out unless I want to use it myself or I want to give it to my friends, you know, whether it's a plate $5,000 pair of earrings or $5 box of rice. You know, whatever that is, I want to make sure I feel really good about it. And, you know, there's a whole village of people in India depending on me not to mess up. So, like, you know, I want to make sure they feel proud and, and, and also that my daughter feels proud. You know, it's just, for me, it's an ego thing. Like, at this point, you know, I'm lucky. I've had a lot of opportunity and I, I hope I have taken the most out of that opportunity to do what I can, but I just want to, I want, I want to create something so that when I'm, you know, I'm 46, so when I'm 66 or 76, I want to be able to say I built that. And I want young girls who are in India or in Queens in Elmhurst, where I was, you know, when I was Krishna's age, I want them to say, you know, I want to do that because she did it. You know, I just think that's really cool. I think we all have something to offer. Like, we all have a very unique point of view. And my point of view is informed by my personal journey and traveling and, you know, my family and where I come from. And I think there's room. You know, I think there's room for, for McDonald's. And I think there's room for this. And I think there's room for Ethiopian food. And I think there's room for, you know, all of that. And I think, like... The world is getting smaller and bigger at the same time, you know, and that's exciting to me. And I want young people to go and explore the world and if nothing else but like a plate of rice that they're using in college because they, you know, they don't have time to cook, um, you know, makes them curious about South India or they have a college roommate who's Korean um, or whatever it is. Like, I think the more you understand another person's culture and experience that culture, the better you are, you know? And you can see that without getting on my soapbox in this election. Yes, I was just, I was just thinking that. Mm. And to end on a positive note, which is a very positive note, thank you, where, where can we buy all this? Um, you can buy this at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think it's sold out on Guild, but there are other stores like Bloomingdale's and stuff that carry them. Um, just Google it. I think Amazon sells some of it. Um, we're in the process of, you know, redesigning a new line. Um, but those are some of those stuff. Yeah, that stuff is still available. I and think. then this is on 
Amazon. This is on Amazon. It's at Barnes and Noble. If you guys live in New York, you can also get it at a wonderful store called Kitchen Arts and Letters. And I say that because I'm a really big believer in independent bookstores. And if you, you know, if you don't have time, you can order it online from you know Amazon or Barnes and Noble. But you know, if you love food, do yourself a favor and go up to 96th Street. Um, the six train goes up there, so it's not that expensive. <laughs> um, and, and this is a bookstore that's only devoted to cookbooks. It's a, it's a small bookstore, but it's wonderful. It's chock-a-block from, you know, floor to ceiling with, with lovely books from all over the world. And, you know, when I was in college, I was a financial aid student, and I didn't have a lot of money to go out and stuff. And I remember I had the New York Times International Cookbook that was written by Craig Claiborne. And we would buy that book, and we would open it and just randomly pick a country, and we would all pool our money. Me and my roommates would go buy the groceries for that um, country, would make all the food. And, you know, we didn't have money to go to Sweden, but <laughs> we could eat herring. You know? <laughs> so, so it was, you know, you can travel with your fork, and I just hope that I expose uh, a new generation of Americans to things they may not have known before. Thank you so much. You're amazing. You're very welcome. Thank you.